this is the cheapest helmet I could find right here at Walmart. I don't think you guys should buy this helmet. However, this is one of the most expensive mountain bike helmets that I can find that most of you guys will recognize, the Troy Lee Design A3 helmet, $220 helmet, amazing helmet, every feature you could possibly want, but I don't think you should buy this one either. A couple drinks may have been involved in the filming of this video. I had my brother over and he's just getting into mountain biking and I was talking with him about the difference between a cheap and an expensive mountain bike helmet. I was just talking with him about some of the costs associated. Yeah, you got your bike, but you also got to think about the type of protective gear that you got and helmet is a big piece of that. And there's a huge difference between that cheap helmet. My brother was looking at Walmart at one of these cheaper helmets and I was like, dude, don't buy the cheap helmet at Walmart. You're gonna to wanna to buy an expensive helmet. He said, okay, well, how expensive, how much money do I spend on a helmet? Which really got me thinking and wanted to make this video to help him and help all you guys decide how much should you spend on a helmet? What's the big difference between the cheapest and the most expensive helmet? And where's that happy medium? You know, not too expensive, not too cheap, just right, that perfect, Goldilocks helmet. So, this is the very cheapest helmet, like I said. I, I found this one down at Walmart. I actually thought they are gonna be a lot cheaper. This one was like $30, almost $30. I don't know if this is even big enough for my giant dome. We're gonna be cutting these helmets apart like I kinda showed a little bit there in the intro and showing the differences, but you're gonna get the basic protection, that outer hard shell right there. You're gonna get that internal foam and you're gonna get that padding right there but it's not gonna give you the full protection as some of the features we're gonna see on the more expensive helmet. Trying this helmet on in the store, I was wondering if this thing was even gonna fit my massively large dome. And you can see, putting this thing on, even though it has the ratchet strap in the back to make it somewhat fit your head, it's still just, me being a guy with a bald head also, I can feel inside just how hard it is against my scalp right there. So we'll compare this helmet right here real quick to the most expensive Troy Lee helmet. Now in the most expensive helmet, you can see that it's got the MIPS, which is an important, very important feature that you're gonna want in your helmets. It's also got different layers of EPP and EPS foam right here. So not only does it have the different layers of foam and the MIPS, it's also got this fancy Fidlock buckle and this one right here comes in a size XL. So for guys with a big head like me, you know it's sized just right to fit on your head, give you that ultimate protection with that Fidlock buckle that ratchet strap in the back. And this is exactly what you're gonna want with that MIPS rotation right there for riding mountain bike trails. So cheap versus expensive helmet. Right off the bat, you can feel that the cheap helmet wasn't fitting quite right. The cheaper helmet is a one size fits all. The more expensive helmet comes in that larger XL size for a bigger dome like mine. But what's the difference when you really look at these helmets close up? What's the difference when you cut these helmets in half? That's when you can really tell some huge differences between that cheap and expensive helmet. So I cut both these helmets in half to be able to show you the big difference between the cheapest and the most expensive helmets. You see, all helmets have a couple basic principles, different components and parts of it that really keep you safe. You got that outer shell, this outer shell, when the helmet takes impact, is that harder shell 
This is going to allow the impact to be able to disperse across that round dome shape of the helmet. Then you got that internal part, that foam, that's going to go ahead and take that as it impacts hard enough. That's what's giving you that extra little bit of cushion when you go ahead and crash. Now you can see on that impact test that the more expensive helmet actually cracked right there. The foam actually did its job and took some of that impact cracking relieving some of that pressure, preventing it from going straight to your head. The cheaper helmet, you can see when I hit that, foam doesn't crack at all, which means all that force is gonna end up right to your head. Then you got that internal layer of the padding right there, the overlooked layer, that a lot of people don't realize how important that is to keep the helmet fit correctly to your head, which is why it's why it's very important to be able to get the right size helmet for the type of riding you do. Now, on most modern mountain bike helmets, you also have that ratchet strap in the back that's gonna be able to lock the helmet in around the back of your head. But on the more expensive helmet right here, you can see, first of all, on that outer layer. This outer layer right here is just a little bit thicker than the cheapest helmet right here, probably a little bit higher quality material. And as I was cutting through it, definitely you could tell the difference between this outer plastic layer on the expensive helmet versus a cheap helmet. Also, when it comes to the foam, you can see the cheaper helmet has one layer of foam, really hard foam the whole way through that you can't really compress. The more expensive helmet has that harder layer of foam on the outside that actually is still just a little bit softer even than this layer of foam. And then it's got an even softer layer when it gets closer to your head to really help with that impact. This helmet also has that MIPS liner. Now what is MIPS? That's that piece of plastic right there that rotates because it was, as we all know, most impacts don't happen straight down. Most impacts happen as you're riding forward on your bike and you crash, that's gonna allow the helmet to be able to rotate a little bit as you crash and not have those rotational forces go into your skull and into your brain. Then when it comes to the padding on this, you can see just how much better the padding is on the more expensive helmet, how it covers a lot more surface area, how it's probably even a lot more breathable and just gives you a lot better fit when compared to the cheapest mountain bike helmet there is. But this Troy Lee design helmet is like $220. I think I found this on sale for $217 on Amazon, which is way more than this Schwinn helmet right here, which is only like $30 at Walmart. So what's the right helmet? Where's that perfect middle ground? If you want all the features of the most expensive helmet, but you don't want to spend that super high price tag. And that's where I came upon the new Outdoor Master Gym Mountain Bike Helmet. Now, I have to be honest with you guys, this company, Outdoor Master, they contacted me and asked me if I would review their helmet. And after riding this helmet, I've really been happy with the way this helmet performs. Not only does it have some of that great external layer of the plastic right there and that good foam layer like you'd expect. It also has that internal MIPS, which is gonna allow the internal of the helmet to rotate. It's got that good adjustment in the back right there to be able to get this helmet to fit just right. I have a really big head, so I usually wear a size large, extra large helmet. And you can see this thing on me fits pretty good when compared to my Troy Lee design helmet right here. So you can see, look at how this thing fits and the amount of vents it has, really good airflow. I think it fits pretty good, looks pretty good compared to a more expensive helmet, the Troy Lee design helmet that I had before Outdoor reached out to me. This helmet just feels massive to me, doesn't breathe as good. You can see not as good of vents. And with all the same features, I'm getting a helmet 
that I think fits better, looks better, breathes better, and is just as safe bombing downhill. I've always bought the most expensive helmets. I've always known I shouldn't buy the cheapest helmets. I've always wondered the differences between these two, and I've always been searching for that perfect Goldilocks helmet, which I think I found.